Anthony Hartwig here with the Western Reserve Girls Basketball Player Profile. I'm joined by senior Kennedy Miller. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining me. Yep, thank you for having me. And uh, when you talk about this season and, and some of the goals and aspirations for the team, what kind of things come to mind? Um, like I said earlier in one of my uh, interviews I had this year, I definitely want to make it back to districts and get another chance at McDonald this year and uh, another chance to get back to regional since I haven't been there since my sophomore year. And I feel like it'd just be a great turnout for my senior year. And when, when you look at your teammates and, and some of the players you play with, yeah, great guard play, obviously got a great post. And Danny, do you kind of feel like this team is really set up for a run this year? Honestly, like, I feel like we're going to surprise a lot of people. A lot of people think that we lost, um, I guess, a big amount of our team last year, which don't get me wrong, we did. We had a great team last year, too. But I feel like this year with, like, our freshmen, uh, Olivia Hughes and Lisa Eicher, and obviously, like, us, our seniors and stuff that have been playing, I feel like we have a great team bond that is going to, like, show a lot this year and definitely make it somewhere. What was it like being senior night so early and not having it, you know, last game of the year? And, and you got to feel those emotions, but at the same time, you have so much of a season to look forward to. Um, it was definitely a little weird just because, like, you know, usually it's your last home game. But I feel like we did a good job of, like, adjusting and just realizing, like, it was more of this focusing on the game and the competition we had rather than, like the emotions, but yeah, I mean, it was definitely an emotional day and I was glad we got the win too, but. Yeah, you had a heck of a, of a matchup to look forward to on that day to focus for with Dalton coming in. Uh, you get to go to the free throw line with the game kind of on the line. What was going through your head during that whole game and, and during that moment? Um, The first half, I kind of started off a little rough. I mean, I didn't really handle the ball so well, I felt like, and Going into halftime, I was just like thinking to myself, I needed to come out and like in order to win the game, I, we needed to like step up as a team. And I feel like I knew, like I knew I wasn't, I didn't get much shots that game. So I started driving to the basket and then trying to get myself going a little bit. And then when I started hitting my free throws, I knew that we were pulling together at the end, like for the win. When uh, you look at that win and maybe the response to it, what does a win like that against a team that you might see in regionals down the line do for this team's confidence? Um, it definitely was a great win to have, and I feel like it kind of showed other teams too that like we had the ability, we have the ability to get back to regionals and play with those teams. And I mean, like we we lost a doll in my sophomore year actually in regionals. So like it, it me and Danny were just like kind of saying it was kind of good to just beat their team just because you know. What were some personal goals that you set for yourself uh, coming into this season? Um, honestly, like, I already broke the assist record and stuff, and, like, I've been doing a good job, I feel like, of dishing the ball to my teammates. So this year I was just trying to focus more on, like, driving to the basket and getting myself some touches, like, when our team needed a quick bucket. And I feel like so far this season, like, I've had a few big moments to help my team. And it, you got the assist record. I believe you have a three-point record too, right? Um, I had the – I had most three-pointers in a game. I had six, but then my friend – or my teammate, Olivia Pater, she broke that last year, so. Well, you, you got the, the ability to score whatever you want, but you also are a point guard, and you also obviously have the ability to distribute. What's it like kind of trying to – navigate you know when to be aggressive and when to distribute it and, and trying to pick that apart during the flow of the game um I feel like part of being a point guard is having like that mentality and just knowing when it's your time to score for your team or knowing when it's like the time to take control of the game and give your you know your top players the ball and stuff so I feel like at times I know okay I need I need to have the ball in my hands or I need to give it to my team and stuff so I feel like that's just part of like me being a point guard, I just know when, when and what to do with the ball. What kind of things have you done to kind of improve those skills over the years to, to really sharpen the point guard skills? Um, you know, every day in practice, we always work on skills, whether that's ball handling or whether that's shooting. And also just like being around my dad and kind of knowing the game, that's just also helped me, which that's given me like the upper hand, I feel like, just because I'm always around my coach.
Right. You brought up your dad, head coach. Uh, what's it like getting coached by that? And what's the dynamic uh, there between the dad and the coach? What, what's that like? Um, I mean, the second I step on the floor, he's not my dad. He's my coach. And the second I stop off, he's my dad. So it's like we both have that. We both have this bond through basketball. And I feel like we do a good job of – he does a good job, I should say, of treating me like a player. I mean, I'm not, I'm not treated any differently than – any other girl on my team. And I honestly, I feel like some coaches that do coach are dads. They're not coaches. So I'm glad that I have a coach. What about like, the whole coaching staff at Western Reserve? You know, he, he doesn't do it alone, obviously. What, what are some of the things that makes the, the whole coaching staff uh, special? Um, I said this in my, uh, actually in my, on senior night, I did a shout out to my assistant coach, Coach Bergen. He, he's honestly one of the biggest people that have like done the most for me. I feel like ever since I was in like fifth or sixth grade, he's been the one that's always been in the gym a lot with me. And like, he does, he taught me a bunch of fundamentals. He's the one that worked on my shot with me. He does a lot for our program for sure. And even with like the younger kids now, he's still involved with every grade. It's not just high school. So like our coaching staff from fifth grade on is, probably the reason that our basketball program is the way that it is. And when you talk about the players on your team, the freshmen, you have some freshmen getting some varsity time, new faces stepping in. What's it like kind of meshing the senior leadership with some of the young faces? Um, our first few practices, I feel like I tried to um, make a leader of myself and show that like, I tried to calm them down in a way because I feel like they were kind of scared or like timid in a way just because, you know, you're a freshman and you're coming up. And even when I was a freshman, I kind of had that, like, you're just, you're not, you know, you haven't been in the program for a while. So, like, I feel like meshing with them was not actually as hard as I thought it would be because this is just, it, it was just a really easy group to work with. I mean, I've known the freshmen and stuff my whole life. So, like, I just feel like we already had a bond and it's just going to get bigger. With all the uncertainty that, that was about this winter, about with, whether or not we'd have even a season, and the uncertainty that definitely the summer months brought, what kind of things did, did this team do to stick together? Um, so over the summer and, like, just going into our season, we did some things like this. Like, we did over Zoom calls, and we um, some of the seniors had, like, a role we had like we did teams and like competitions and we would try to work out with the younger girls and do stuff over you know like over the internet and stuff just to try to keep everyone involved and getting ready for the season so it's definitely been a little hard at times you know like things with the internet and stuff like that but I feel like our team has done a great job of adapting and stuff even in practices you know we try to stay six feet apart and we always have our masks on when we need to so it has been difficult, but I feel like our team is showing that we can do it. What are some of your pregame routines that you like? If you don't stick to this kind of routine, uh, it might throw you off. Do you have anything like that? Um, yes, in a way. I feel like most, <laughs> most game days I usually take a nap before I get on the bus or before I get up to the school, I take a little nap. And... Weird to say, I don't really eat before games. Uh, my mom gets mad, but <laughs> I don't like to eat before games because I get nervous. And I always fill my water up, like, with the ice. I go in the ice room and fill it up. I always have the same ice for every game. Um, always have my bag packed the night before. And just simple things like that. All right, so you don't eat before. So I'm guessing you get really hungry after. What's oh, yeah. your favorite post-game meal? Um, favorite post game, I'd say probably like Chipotle or something. There you go. Um, what things make you proud to be at Western Reserve to wear their colors and just to represent that school system? Um, the community, the fans, everyone, everyone's just so involved in like our school. I feel like it's just a giant family and like. I wouldn't want to play basketball or even go to our school anywhere else. Like, I just love Western Reserve. You brought up the community. Obviously, this year, fans not really able to come other than parents. What's it like trying to build the energy yourselves without having the crowd to do it? 
it honestly has been weird and at times it's kind of like you don't know whether to cheer or not like you know but um Danny and I, I feel like we try to bring up the team a lot and we try to cheer and me and her always are pretty loud on the court. So um, it's definitely different not having our fans there and stuff, but knowing that like someone's watching and it's good like to have you guys at the games and stuff, knowing that other fans can watch and still keep in touch with our games and stuff. What are your future goals after high school that you kind of want to accomplish? Um. I'm still looking to see where I want to go to college. Uh, I know I want to go for like dental hygiene, but um, this year I actually took all my classes at YSU. I did the college credit classes. So I actually had all my classes there, but I don't know where I'm going to go to college. And a lot of people ask me if I'm going to play basketball or not. And I've been on a few visits and I've talked to a few coaches and stuff, but I'm not sure. I'm just trying to keep my like mind open and just, wait till the right one now are you are you looking do you want to go away from home a little bit or do you are you someone that likes to stay close um honestly distance or being close is not really like one of the things that I kept in mind I visited a college about like six hours away this year and um I kind of took that into consideration because I do I am a, like a family person and I like being home a lot but I could also see myself like distance distancing out. So like, I kind of just, I feel like it's all about if I like the college, I'm not really so concerned about like the distance. During the months when we were shut down in the spring, what was your favorite quarantine activity? Hmm. Um, I actually bought a, um, <laughs> I bought a new, I bought a DS on Amazon because I was so bored, but like, I played that a little bit, and what else did I do? I did a lot of basketball, too. Every day I worked out and did something with that, just because most of the days we had a few nice days during quarantine. But um, I would say probably just, like, trying to keep myself busy and, like, just doing, like, I did all my schoolwork in the morning and stuff, so, like, it was so much different. My schoolwork took me, like, two hours rather than eight, but... And you did get to have an AAU season, and, and you, you play travel. What, what does that kind of bring to your game? What kind of things does, does playing that competition and playing in that atmosphere bring to your high school season? Honestly, um, AAU, I feel like, can either help people or not really help people. It kind of depends on how you approach it because some AAU teams, you know, just play because people just want to, you know, have something to do. But, like, I always looked at AAU as just like another basketball season for me. So like this year I went into AAU. Um, this was, I, well, this wasn't the first year. This was my second year not having my dad as my AAU coach because he's coached me in AAU too. But this year I actually had uh, Quinn. I played for the Lakers and he was my coach. And I feel it was definitely a good year because like you get another standpoint from another coach and like how they – coach things and like you just get another way of playing with different girls and I, I even played with like the twin or Maddie and Molly from uh, McDonald so it was just like I was playing with my rivals but it was still a good way I mean like you get to play other teams and you know it's just like it was definitely fun this year and I kind of went into this year focusing on like I said like getting better at attacking the basket and trying to focus on myself a little bit. Now, I know Quinn's going to watch this because that's just Quinn. So I can't pass this up without, like, giving you the chance to give him a message or something that you you want to say to him. Um, Honestly, I just want to thank him for, like, being my coach and teaching me. I mean, like, he was a great person just to even talk to. And, like, he even keeps in touch with me after games. And I was really glad he came to our senior night and stuff. Like, that means a lot to me. He only coached me for one season and for a coach to be there – and stuff like that just it meant a lot to me just to have somebody that like truly cared and stuff and of course we we like to give all of the athletes that we interview the chance to thank their support staff and the people that have been there through for them through the years so I just want to give you time to to kind of thank whoever else you want to thank um I want to thank obviously my dad like he's just always on and off the court I mean after bad games good games we always talk about it He's always on the computer right after the game, watching the game again, as if he didn't just coach it. I mean, he's just – he does so much for the team and so much for me. Also, I want to thank my 
uh, the assistant coach, Brogan, like I said, he's taught me so much about basketball and just so much about life. He's literally like my second father, I swear. But also my teammates. I mean, I wouldn't be – we wouldn't, our team wouldn't be anything without each other. Like, win or lose, we're always together, and I couldn't do anything without them. Before we let you go, it's almost the holiday season. What's your favorite Christmas song? And uh, what's your favorite Christmas movie or TV special? My favorite Christmas song, probably, probably Mistletoe by Justin Bieber, because I love Justin Bieber. And what was the second thing? Favorite Christmas movie or, or TV special? Christmas movie. Um, either National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, I love that one, or uh, probably just like The Grinch. I like that movie too. All right, Andy, thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck the rest of the season, and we definitely look forward to talking to you again real soon. Yep. Thank you.